Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are with two guys that I've gotten to know over the years, and I love these guys. It's David and John from Debt Free Guys. How are you both? We're good. How are you? I'm, do I'm doing well. I love what you guys are doing because, I mean, I remember years ago, I just saw you guys out there just kind of promoting and posting, and it was all things about LGBT finance on, um, I, I probably saw you on Twitter more than anything else, but um, um, I thought it was amazing what you guys were doing. And then you were coming out to speak uh, a few years ago at an event in uh, New Jersey, and I got to meet you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun and, and unexpected. I, we, we had seen you online a little bit, but we had no idea that you were going to uh, show up at our, that conference. And it was great to finally meet you in person and keep the friendship growing. Yeah, but what's interesting is that you guys, uh, I mean, when you were there, you were at, uh, it was during Pride and it was Prudential. The Prudential had you come out and, and had you kind of up on stage speaking about the whole world of LGBT finance. And that seems to be the world that you really kind of cracked that nut. Yeah, about that time, they had just published their second uh LGBT financial experience study, um, and they asked us to come out and talk about our personal experience with money and what we're doing at our, at, as our mission um, that augmented what their study found. Yeah, I, I think that um, it was nice that Prudential was one of the leaders in, this, in the, the financial services space that actually started to take an interest in what were the needs or what were the, the issues that LGBT people were facing when it came to their money. Um, and they kind of have led that for quite a long time. And um, John and I started really kind of speaking to the LGBT community with our podcast, the Queer Money Podcast back in 2016. And that's when we really started to, to really um, dig into the issues and the conditions and try to gather data about what was going on in the LGBT community when it comes to money. Because we know for the most part, financial services is very pale, male and stale. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you've somehow made it fun. We try to make it rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but um, what's interesting, and I mean, I've seen it on your website and, and a lot of different things. But uh, tell us for our, for the part those of in our audience that who haven't met you yet. Um, but how did you get started with all this? So um, our our backstory is that uh, after a year and a half of being together, John and I finally came out to each other about our finances. We both were in financial services. We were helping other people with their money, telling them these are the things they should be doing. They should be saving for retirement. They should be planning. They should be having have an emergency fund, all of that kind of stuff. And we were not doing any of it ourselves. And so we kind of had our our aha, come to Jesus, kick in the butt moment. Uh, and it was pretty sad um, because we confessed to each other that between the two of us, we had $51,000 in credit card debt. Wow. And uh, we were living in a basement apartment, not, not like a nice New York basement apartment, but literally we were, we were financially and physically living in a hole. Yeah. And uh, was that that moment that John and I basically said to each other, we've got to change this or our lives are not going to going to be fabulous like we want them to be. We were living fabulously broke. Yeah. And uh, after two and a half years, we paid off that credit card debt. We realized that our, our knowledge from working in the industry and our knowledge from having experienced it ourselves was a great way to teach other people because we saw lots of other folks in the community living very fabulously, but fabulously broke, kind of like we were. Yeah. And so we said, let's let's start sharing this with other people. And that's how we kind of basically got into the whole idea of, of uh, sharing personal finance content. We first wrote a book, realized that that wasn't going to go anywhere if we didn't have a platform. And that's when we became Debt Free Guys and we started Debt Free Guys uh, website. And then about a year later, we started the podcast. I mean, you've developed this entire, you know, this entire following and uh, in a niche that I don't think anybody is, you know, there have always been, uh, like, whether it's advocate with Wells Fargo and stuff, there have been LGBT financial money minutes and so forth, but no one's really tackled it in quite the same way you guys did. And, and especially because of that, like you said, you went from the website and really being able to get out there and tell the story through social media, podcasting and everything. Well, that's one of the things that we love about the podcast, because even today, we're still learning the financial nuances of the LGBTQ community. There are just so many flavors and variables that I think no, most people don't consider, even LGBTQ people aren't even aware of. So it's been hugely educational for us. Um, and we, uh, we'd like to provide a voice to the community. I don't think that there are a lot of platforms that are helping uh, provide a platform for trans people to talk about finance, for non-binary people to talk about finance. So we'd like to have those types of guests on the show so we can share their story and understand their context. And hopefully 
the goal all along is to improve the entire LGBTQ community's personal finance experience. Yeah, and I noticed your your website says you're sponsored by Capital One, but I know you work with like Chase and Mass Mutual, and so you've really like companies have really kind of keyed in on on the the work you've done and also the audience you've created. Right, I, I think one of the things that John and I have really tried to do is um, is we've tried to look at companies that are are more than doing more than rainbow washing, right? They actually are trying to serve the needs of the community or they're trying to be inclusive. So that means more than just showing up for a pride parade or putting their rainbow logo out in June, right? And that was one of the things that we saw with Capital One is, it, you know, I even posted a picture on Twitter yesterday. They have an article on their website and it's just a general personal finance article and it has a gay couple sitting on their couch. I mean, it's this, it's micro things like that that show that companies are truly inclusive uh, rather than like we, so I just said, rainbow washing. And so we've looked for companies that are trying to lead and we are connecting with them so that we can show our community that there are companies out there that truly do understand and want to serve us. It was actually a, a, a mass mutual study um, back, I think it was in 2017, that highlighted that so few LGBT people work with financial advisors. Primarily, the number one reason is because they felt like people in financial services want to or didn't know how to serve them. Yeah. And the reality is, is that there are some companies that are trying to do that now. And we want to highlight those companies. And we're, we're very grateful that they also understand that it's, it takes a, someone, a voice from someone inside the community or voices from people inside the community to talk about this rather than them doing it all on their own. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. But then not only companies and you've got this audience, but your audience is blossomed and bloomed. You've, yeah, I've, I've noticed you've been on, I, in fact, I have through Flipboard, I see your articles sometimes on Forbes, but I know you've been on Motley, Foo, Motley Fool, I was going to say Foo, and uh, <laughs> and a few others, but now you've really, uh, like, really expanded beyond the world of social media into, like, some really substantial uh, websites and so forth. Yeah, we were somewhat fortunate in noticing that there was uh, a niche that wasn't being filled, um, and Dave and I thought that we were perfect candidates to try to fill that space. And we've been able to leverage that to get uh, some great partnerships, uh, both with corporations as well as with media. Yeah. Um, and I think because we were the first people in that space, a lot of those opportunities opened up to us. Including Rachel Ray show. <laughs> yeah, we actually recorded uh, that Rachel Ray show this time last summer. <laughs> it was a very, very hot day. <laughs> wow. that, no, I think that's amazing. And, uh, but I noticed also through, uh, cause you have the podcast and so forth, but um, you're getting more into like with your video money series. So you're getting out there more um, uh, in video as well, right? Yeah, I, I think that w one of the things that we do see is we do see the, the, for lack of a better way of saying it, the attention span of folks is shrinking. Um, they want content that is a bite size. So whether it's getting out on TikTok or reels on Instagram, we know that sometimes it does take just that little bit of information to grab your attention. Yeah. But then we are maintaining the full length videos uh, on YouTube for the podcast, as well as the, the whole podcast, because sometimes we need an explanation as to what we just said in the bite, sound bite, right? So yeah. we kind of are trying to serve both sides is that here's your sound bite, but if you need more information, and go listen to the podcast or find some information on our website. Yeah, no, I love it. And I look forward to being able to uh, connect with you both again. I know what uh, uh, you had a podcast station set up in Philadelphia during the NGLCC uh, conference. And uh, that really, you know, I remember seeing you there and I thought it was fantastic that you guys had got that and set up. Yeah, that was, um, it was a lot of fun and super chaotic and we had never done anything like that before. But <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting because we got to meet so many different fascinating people in the community who are doing just all sorts of different things. P people who are just starting their own businesses and people who are, you know, have businesses that are earning multi-millions of dollars. And it's just uh, all these people coming together in one space, trying to figure out how to help the community and help help, help each individual grow as an entrepreneur. It's, it's an exciting space to be in. Yeah, but I think that's what makes kind of sets you guys apart is that you're you're out there, you're online, but you're also not afraid to get jump out in the real world on a regular basis. And I think that's a fantastic balance. And as, as we all move forward. 
sometimes you got to get out from behind the keyboard. <laughs> you, <laughs> well, it, you know, I, I, I did just say that the, that the industry, financial service industry is pale, male and stale. Well, John and I are two of those, right? So we've got to take this, the stale side and we got to flip it on, on its head, right? And that's where we really try, try to do some fun, fun things. I mean, one of the things that we're thinking about doing with the podcast is actually starting to record a live episode in front of an audience maybe once or twice a year so that not only do the the folks who are listening to the podcast hear the information, but we get voices from actual audience members and asking questions or having conversations. We want to do a little bit more of that because the reality is, is that, that it's not, you can't take all of the advice from just us, right? I mean, we are two cis gay white men and we understand that there are a lot of other voices out there and we want to highlight those. Um, and it's important for LGBT folks to start having money conversations because the more we talk about more and the more we talk about money, the more we understand it, the more we understand it, the better choices we make, the better choices we make, the better results we have when it comes to our money. And I think that's what we all really want, right? We all really want the results. And so there's kind of this chain of, of processes that happen and all it starts with just having that conversation, whether it's with yourself or with someone else. Well, now's a good time. People are gonna be worrying about their money this year. And I think they'll, I think they'll be tuning into you even more. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, our traffic, uh, we see, tend to see spikes in traffic on our website two times a year. In January, when everybody's got their New Year's resolutions and they want, they're going to finally fix their finances. And then we see it again in July. And we don't really know exactly why, but we think it's similarly where people are like, after June and Pride is over, they're like, okay, I really screwed up last month. It's time for me to get my money in order. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is great. Well, like I said, I really look forward to being able to connect with you guys again when you're uh, when you're out here on the East Coast. And uh, in the meantime, just thanks so much for taking a few moments to share some of your story with our audience here. Well, thank you so much for having us. It's great to reconnect and we look forward to actually meeting you again to face here in the near future. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Take care, Doc. Bye-bye.